Hello and welcome back. Today we're talking about the most exciting topic in the world, resumes. Just me, in all seriousness, whether you like it or not, having a great resume is a necessary part about getting a job as a software engineer. There's so many questions that you are probably asking yourself when you're making your resume. What should I include in my resume? How many pages should my resume be? How do I communicate all the most important things while also being very brief? How important is the resume anyway? If you have been confused about any of these questions at any point, you're lucky because you're in the right place. I have spent the past four years literally analyzing and scrutinizing the process of creating and crafting the perfect resume and it has eventually led to some success. So today we'll talk about specifically how to build the perfect resume that is specifically tailored toward getting a job as a software engineer or in the tech industry in general. And we'll do this by going through my current resume and I'll be taking you through step by step through each section to explain to you exactly why I've made the decisions I have. And we'll go through bullet point by bullet point why I have worded everything exactly the way that it is worded. If you've heard my story, you'll know that I was going into banking and consulting for most of my university days until eventually I realized that actually I wanna go into tech. So pretty much everything I have in my tech resume now has been gathered over like the past year and so my resume is not even the most impressive resume out there which should give you hope that if you really want it it can be done because the great thing about this industry and the great thing about coding is that there are many different ways for you to communicate your skills and your passion to your employers to get a job all you have to do is number one learn to code whether it's through a degree or self-taught or bootcamp or whatever and showcase your skills or do something that allows you to prove that you've actually learned to code. Then showcase all of these in a resume, send resume to recruiters, convince recruiter to give you an interview, pass interview, then get a job. Really, that is the process. And where the resume comes in is specifically in the part about getting the interview. The only purpose of your resume is to convince the recruiter or the hiring manager, whoever's looking at your resume, to give you an interview. Past that point, the only thing that matters is your performance in the interview. If you get the interview and you pass the coding interview, and I've got a whole bunch of other videos coming on how to do that, you will get the job. So the only purpose of the resume is to communicate your experience and your skills enough to convince the recruiter to give you the chance, to just give you the opportunity to interview for the company. And so now let's just look at my current resume. So here it is in all its glory. And first of all, just some general advice. The most important thing about the resume is that it needs to be readable. Put yourself in the shoes of the recruiter because what these recruiters go through is they literally go through like a thousand resumes a day or something like that. First impressions are crucial. And if you are sending them a resume that's poorly formatted, that doesn't have proper grammar, where you can literally see that the person has put absolutely no effort into it, it immediately sends a very unprofessional image of you, and probably they're just gonna bin the resume after two seconds, because the purpose of the resume is not just to fill it with as much text as possible, it's to communicate all the relevant details and the relevant skills, the relevant experience as succinctly as possible while having an overall nice looking resume template. And if you want to use this exact template I use, I will put this down in the description. Less is more, don't go to two pages. As a junior, as a new grad, you don't have enough experience to justify a two page resume. Maybe if you have 10 years of experience, you can justify that. But as a junior, you simply don't have enough important stuff to justify two pages. When you're thinking about communicating anything you've done with your projects or your past experience, specifically focus on what you did, not what the company or the team did. This resume is about you. you don't spend any time describing like, oh, this, this is the cool project we worked on. Because then they're gonna go, well, the project was cool, but where were you cool? Were you, uh, were you important? What did you do? This is literally, a, it's a sales document. You're trying to sell yourself. So this is my template. You want to order them in order of importance and everything has to be relevant. They don't care if you worked as a sales assistant in some random company. If you don't have anything relevant to add, then you first need to find relevant skills or relevant experience somehow. The great thing about software engineering is that technical projects or personal projects that you can build are relevant. Those are considered by recruiters as 
relevant experience. Sure, it's not as good as an official internship, but for me, I don't have a computer science degree. I do have a degree, but it's in economics. Again, not relevant, so that's why it's at the bottom. And I have an internship, but it's not a software engineering internship, but it's sort of relevant, so I still have it there. But my personal projects are probably the most important thing that's communicating my coding skills in this resume. For most people, if you have a computer science degree, I would have the education part much higher than what I have. Instead, I just put some computer science online courses that I've done just to showcase that I have actually put in time of my own to actually learn computer science concepts. Now let's start going through this in a bit more detail. So the first thing you need to have is your name, obviously. You may optionally have your role like I do. Check with what's sort of the convention in your specific country, but I know that at least in the US and the UK, including a picture is a no-no. They don't need to know what you look like. You're gonna have your contact details, so your email and your phone, your LinkedIn, your GitHub, absolutely crucial to have them. And on top of that, especially if you don't have any formal experience, it's crucial that you have a personal website, a portfolio website to showcase what you have built. An additional benefit of having a personal website is that you can then link your resume inside your portfolio website so that if a recruiter finds your website online, they can also look at your resume and maybe you will get a callback via that way. So if you just look at my personal website as an example, having this and making sure that it looks really good, you have some really impressive looking projects here, is automatically just going to give a very first impression of you. Because if you open up your website and it looks really bad, they are going to assume that you're not very professional. So the way I made my portfolio website is using hosting it. I pay only $2.99 a month and I get access to a WordPress website builder, hosting as well as a free domain, all for this single $2.99 subscription. And they offer you a whole range of other stuff like security, free email and very conveniently they have offered to sponsor this video and it's literally the perfect sponsor for this channel because i actually use it for my own website basically once you sign up you're gonna land on this very intuitive dashboard then all you have to do is click setup and it'll basically ask you a couple of questions about the type of website you're building for example we'll be building it for myself in this case we'll be making a portfolio website for this we're just gonna go for wordpress because in my opinion it's the easiest way to build a website you're gonna end up on this page where you have all these templates that you can just choose from and if you use this plugin called elementor you get even more templates and an even nicer sort of builder environment you can also easily grab your free domain by clicking claim domain on your main dashboard when recruiters or employers look at my website they are going to just have a very good first impression of me because the website looks nice even though i literally just use the templates but they don't need to know that do they i highly recommend you go to this link right now and on checkout make sure to apply my code internet make coder to get an additional seven percent off the subscription with that let's move on to the next section of the resume optionally you can write a short description of yourself like this don't ramble don't make it wordy just to the point who you are just in my case a junior software engineer at deloitte and maybe like a brief summary of your core skills. Just keep it professional, keep it brief. So if you then go into what type of information you want to include in your bullet points. First of all, please ignore this XXX here. As you can see, I've only just started this role in September of 2022 and I'm recording this literally one week after I started my job. In your bullet points, you want to start everything with a power verb. What does that mean? It means something that's positive and active, something that communicates something that you have done. So like delivered, designed, built, let. Like I'll put like a whole list on the screen now. That is how you wanna think about every single bullet point that you're putting on your resume. Sorry to interrupt today's program, but if you are enjoying this video so far, I would absolutely love you if you could go down below in the description and hit the like button on this video. It's completely free to do, takes less than a second. And by doing that, you could also help other people because the more people like this video, the more people the YouTube algorithm will in turn show this video to. And as a thank you and as a show of my appreciation, here's a picture of a very cute kitten this time for you to enjoy. Now back to the video. So think about what you've done in your experience and then think about what is the most impressive way that I could put this without lying. And this can actually be very hard. You might think that you didn't even do anything impressive. And seriously, during this internship, it was like four weeks long. I didn't do that much impressive stuff. 
but I just spent the time figuring out how could I communicate what I did in the most impressive way possible. Everyone else is doing it, you might as well do it as well. And whenever in any way possible, try to include numbers, 10,000 plus users. Or if you can in any way think about like something that you did that maybe improved the team efficiency, you can like just estimate a number, just go like delivered X, which improved team efficiency by 30%. Any numbers that you include are going to sort of stand out and they're going to quantify the impact that you had. Even if it's sort of a stretch, just try to include numbers whenever possible. In terms of what kinds of projects to include, and when you're building projects, focus on two or three very impressive and sort of more complex projects rather than having like 10 very small ones. If you're a portfolio project, you wanna think about building projects that showcase a range of different skills. The second criteria you wanna think about is something that the interviewer can easily understand. When you look at these, sorting algorithms visualizer, and if you've seen the resume video by Clement Mihalescu, I think his idea of building a visualizer program to be an excellent project. It's probably one of the best portfolio projects I've seen. So I decided to build my own version of the same thing. So if you wanna build something like this, I suggest you go watch his tutorial tutorial video, which I'll have in the description down below. When you look at these bullet points, built JavaScript, blah, blah, blah. Implemented, powerful verbs to start off the sentences. And here you want to describe which technologies you use. So we use JavaScript and React, essentially just what the application does very briefly. And here you want to make sure you have a link to these projects. If there's no proof, it doesn't exist. And my second one, a programming language compiler. Again, this is something that sounds very complicated, but at the same time, especially if you're a software engineer, you understand what a compiler is. And then for here, I've just put stuff about essentially this YouTube channel, entrepreneurial experience. The purpose of this really is to hopefully make my resume stand out a bit. It's sort of questionable whether I should even include this. I've included it because it is relevant because it's I've been mean, coding videos, right? And there's some impressive numbers here, which again might stand out. But on the other hand, some employers might feel like, well, if he has this side hustle, he might not be as engaged in our job. So it's sort of questionable whether I should have this in my resume. And at the bottom, I have my degree. And again, if you have a relevant degree, if you have a computer science degree, this should be much higher than what I have it. Computer science courses, as we discussed, what many people do is they just include like a laundry list of skills that go, oh, leadership, communication, teamwork and all those are obviously very important but i think it's important to include some justification some substance of like where you use those skills even in, when it comes to programming languages what many people do is they just have like a list of like oh i know this language this language list this language anyone can do that anyone can just write a list so that's why I actually haven't included a list of the languages and frameworks I'm comfortable with because it's a lot more powerful but to actually integrate them into this project to show where you've used Java, where you've used Python, where you've used JavaScript and in what context. In general, when it comes to what sort of template you use, don't try to go for some very fancy like colors, like all of these rainbows kind of resume. Just keep it simple, right? Keep it professional. This is a very similar resume template to what I've used for a very long time and it seems to work very well, so I haven't seen the need to change it. If I was to actually apply with this resume, obviously first I would wait that I don't have to buy XXX here, but I would also think about tailoring my CV specifically to the company that I'm applying for. Let's say I'm applying for Google. What I would do is go to Google's job description look at specifically the skills they ask for, the, the experience they're looking for, and look to include those points in my resume somehow. For example, if I was applying for a Python developer position, I would make sure that all of my projects showcase my Python skills. From my job, I would include any time when I worked in Python, on like a Python project, for example. And in terms of what other stuff not to have, definitely don't have any of your like hobbies or like your personal social media. They don't need to see your drunk pictures from your Instagram. Please don't include that. But in general, just from whatever you've done, just think about what is the way that I can put this across in my resume that makes it seem as impressive as possible. You need to learn to sort of sell yourself. It might not sound exciting. It might even sound intimidating. It was very intimidating for me, but over time, just through iteration and like learning about how to make a resume, you sort of just learn how to sell whatever skills and experience you have as effectively as possible. So that in all its glory is how 
I would build a software engineer resume right now. I was just updating this the other day. But once you have your resume, the only thing that's now standing between you and the job is the dreaded coding interview. And for many people, this part is actually the most challenging part. It's not very easy. It took me a very long time. And that is why I made this video where I explain in the dumbest, easiest way possible what data structures actually are, why tech companies care about them so much. And I have a second part coming on algorithms right here. So after building your resume, you absolutely must watch these two videos right here to actually start learning to pass those interviews.